At last we go from the pen to the first OMD, the EM5. Its kit lens was the 12 to 50, no longer in production, but I found it gave a better performance than often assumed, and I still have one for travel. I was born here. This is Dorking in the centre of Surrey. The viewpoint is the Nower, a sandy hill just outside town, known to locals but not the casual visitor to the town. Architecturally, Dorking is quite interesting, but its fame largely rests on its location. That is Box Hill in the background, and Denby's Vineyard, one of the largest in the country, is not far. Rafe Vaughan Williams, the composer, lived in Dorking for over 20 years and founded the Leith Hill Music Festival. Emmett's Garden is a National Trust property in Kent, just over the county border from where I live and not far from Sevenoaks. As you can see, spring is a good time for a visit, but to preserve colour in this glorious display, I spot meter a highlight, and then, if necessary, correct any underexposed shadow in Adobe Lightroom from the raw file. It is easy to dismiss this rather bland shot as photographically uninteresting, but commercially it shows much information, perhaps for a magazine article. I am about 600 feet up on the North Downs, not far from where I live, and it shows the town of Oxted clearly in its setting. And that's the M25 London's Orbital Motorway. At least I turned up on the right day for clarity. Very important. This is one of my first images with the EM5. A feature that overseas visitors to the UK enjoy is our architecture, and there are still plenty of buildings that go back hundreds of years, sometimes further. This is Priest House at West Hoathly. It's not far from the Bluebell Railway, all of which heralds a splendid nostalgic trip into our past. Speaking of which... Here is the Bluebell Heritage Railway. What a magnificent engine, and it's facing the right way. Wasn't I lucky? Sharpthorne used to have a station, and you can see where it used to be. Don't worry, I am in no danger. I am following a public footpath that crosses the railway. Footpaths where we have the right to roam is unique to England and Wales. We have an intricate web of preserved paths and tracks going back to the Middle Ages, established at a time when public transport was no more than horse and cart. Currently, I am producing a series of programmes about secret London. One of those secrets are the many open spaces and parks within the city. Greater London extends towards the home counties, and it is here that you will encounter open country that is still in London. Now this is Munken Hadley Common, between Barnet and Enfield. If you have ever taken the train out of King's Cross, you would have passed beneath my feet in a tunnel. The Lake District is popular at any time of year and finding an isolated spot may require its own skill. I didn't find many people here, and the view is the ever-popular Rydal Water. I am on White Moss Common, which also extends down to the River Rothay that flows from Grasmere to Rydal Water and then into Windermere, which is probably where you will find everyone else. So, don't tell anyone about this viewpoint, but it is not easy to find, and any path that exists, let alone clear, is often overgrown during summer. As a reward for your efforts, there are also excellent panoramas of Grasmere. Yes, two views for the effort of one. This shot is from private land, but it is yours for the taking if you choose to stay at 
H.F. Holliday's Country House Hotel in the Lake District at Derwent Bank. The lawn sweeps down to the lake and, facing east, it is a glorious place for a sunrise. It is also one of those views where everything uncannily falls into place. You want the right weather, of course, but after that it is just a question of standing in the right place. I spot meter near a highlight and then add further magic in Lightroom, from what I can recall. Including the sun should not damage the sensor when hand-holding, but definitely a risk if the camera is stationary and mounted on a tripod. It was originally intended that the Northern Line Underground should continue to Wimbledon and Sutton, but commercial pressures from the railway prevented that, so it finished instead at Morden, following for much of its route underneath Roman Stain Street, today the A24. Except for commuters, there are not many reasons for a visit, but no, just around the corner is Morden Hall Park, previously part of a large estate and now open to the public courtesy of the National Trust. Tramlink, out of Croydon, follows its eastern boundary. For many years I taught photography at Farncombe, located on the crest of the Cotswold Escarpment, near Broadway, overlooking the coloured counties of Gloucestershire. I had time to myself, and one of my favourite strolls was along the ridge to Saintbury and its church, now redundant but happily preserved. I also ran photo holidays for HF from their hotel at Borton on the Water and got to know the Cotswolds very well. A favourite location was the Broadway Tower, superbly situated on the escarpment and, with the benefit of the right weather, with marvellous views over the Severn Valley to the Malvern Hills. Another open space in Greater London, adjacent to Richmond Park, enabling an exploration of both on foot or bike, if you have one handy. For me, it is these huge open spaces within the capital that make London so fascinating, a pleasurable juxtaposition of town and country. With the switch from Olympus to OM system, the EM5 was eventually superseded by the OM5. It kept its lightweight and small size so essential for travel photography. All shots are handheld aided by what is widely regarded today as one of the best image stabilizers to be found in any camera or lens, avoiding the need for a tripod. In many situations, particularly where space is restricted or speed is of essence, successfully hand-holding a camera without fuss is important. Like me, I keep the kit simple and don't use anything or indeed a technique that is not necessary to do in the first place. <laughs>